Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to read Ezra 1 to 5, Psalm 144, and Proverbs 26. Let's get started. King Xerxes ruled over the 127 territories in his kingdom. They reached from India all the way to Kash. Here's what happened during the time Xerxes ruled over the whole Persian kingdom. He was ruling from his royal throne in the fort of Susa. In the third year of his rule, King Xerxes gave a feast. It was for all of his nobles and officials. The military leaders of Persia and Media were there. So were the princes and the nobles of the territories he ruled over. Every day for 180 days, he showed his guests the great wealth of his kingdom. He so showed them how glorious his kingdom was. When those days were over, the king gave another feast. It lasted for seven days. It was held in the garden of the king's courtyard. It was for all the people who lived in the fort of Susa. Everyone from the least important person to the most important was invited. The, the garden was decorated with white and blue linen banners. They hung from ropes that were made out of white linen and purple cloth. The ropes were connected to silver rings or marble pillars. There were gold and silver couches in the garden. They were placed on a floor that was made out of small stones. The floor had a purple crystal, marble, mother of pearl, and other stones of great value. Real wine was served in gold cups. Each cup was different from all the others. There was plenty of wine. The king always provided it as much as his guests wanted. He commanded that they should be allowed to drink as much or as little as they wished. He directed all his servants to give his guests what they asked for. Queen Vashti also gave the feast. Only women were invited. It was held in the royal palace of King Xerxes. On the seventh day, Xerxes was in a good mood because he had drunk a lot of wine. So he gave a command to the ser to the seven seven officials. He said they were Mehuman, Biz Bizza, Harbona, Big and a Bagtha, Zitha, and Carcass. King Xerxes told them to bring Queen Vashti to him. He wanted her to come wearing her royal crown. He wanted to show off her beauty to the people and nobles. She was lovely to look at. The attendants told Queen Vashti what the king had ordered her to do, but she refused to come. So the king became very angry. It was the king's practice to ask the, for advice about matters of fear and fairness. So he spoke with the wise men who understood what was going on at that time. They were, they were the men closest to the king. Their names were Karshina, Shepha, Admatha, Tarshish, Merez, Marsena, and Mimukan. They were the seven nobles of Persia and Media. They were the king's special advisers and the most important men in the kingdom. You should know the law of the king said. What should I do to Queen Vashti? She hasn't obeyed my command. The officials told her what I ordered her to do, didn't they? Then Mimu Khan gave a reply to the king and the nobles. He said, Queen Vashti has done what is wrong, but she didn't do it only against you, King Xerxes. She did it also against all the nobles, and she did it against, all, against the people in all the territories you rule over. Only the women will hear about what the queen has done. Then they won't respect their husbands. They'll say, King Xerxes commanded Queen Vashti to be brought to it, but she wouldn't come. Here's what will start today. The leading woman in Persia and media who have heard about the Queen's accident will act in the same way. They will disobey all your nobles, just as she disobeyed you. They won't have any respect for their husbands. They won't honour them. So if it pleases you, send out a royal order. Let it be written down in the laws of Persia and media. Those laws can never be changed. Let the royal order say that Vashti can never see you again. I said, let her position as queen be given to someone who is better than she is, and let your order be announced all through your entire kingdom. Then all women will have respect for their husbands, from the least important to the most important. The king and his nobles were pleased with that advice, so he did what me and me had suggested. The king sent messengers out to every territory in the kingdom. He sent them to each territory in its own way. He sent them to every nation in his own language. He, the messages announced that every man should rule over his own family, using his own language. Chapter 2 Later, the great anger of King Xerxes calmed down. 
Then he remembered Vashti and what she had done. He also remembered the royal order he had sent out concerning him. At that time, the, queen, the king's personal ascendant. Attendants made a suggestion. They said, King Xerxes, let a search be made for you some beautiful young virgins for you. Appoint some officials in every territory in your kingdom. Have them bring all these beautiful young women into the fort of Susan. Put them in the special place where the virgins stay. Then put he guy in charge of them. He's the official reception. He's in charge of the woman. Let beauty care be given to the new group of women. Then let the young woman who pleases you become queen and wash these place. The king liked that advice, so he followed it. There was a new, there was a Jew living in the fort of Susa, who was from the tribe of Benjamin. His name was Mordecai. He was the son of Jer. Jer was the son of Shimea. Shimea was the son of Kish. Nebuchadnezzar had forced Mordecai to leave Jerusalem. He was among the prisoners who were carried off along with Jehoiachin. Jehoiachin had been king of Judah. Nebuchadnezzar was king of Babylon. Mordecai had a cousin named Hadassah. He had raised her because she didn't have a father or mother. Hadassah had also, was also called Esther. She had a lovely figure and was very beautiful. Mordecai had adopted her as his own, as his own daughter. He had done it when, his father, when her father and mother died. After the king's court and all were announced, many young women were brought to the fort of Susan. He guy was put in charge of them. Esther was also taken to the king's palace. She was put under the control of he guy. He was in charge of the place where the virgin stayed. Esther pleased him. He showed her how happy he was with her. Right away he provided her with, be with her beauty care and her special food. He appointed similar, seven female attendants to help her. They were chosen from the king's palace. He moved her and her attendants into the best part of the place where the virgin stayed. Esther hadn't told anyone who her people were. She hadn't talked about her family. That's because Mordecai had told her not to. Mordecai tried to find out how Esther was getting along. He wanted to know what was happening with her. So he walked back and forth near the courtyard by the place where the virgin stayed. He did it every day. Each young woman had to complete 12 months of beauty care. They used oil or mirror, oil of mirror to, for six months, and they used perfume and makeup for the other six months. The virgin's turn to go in the to King Xerxes could come only after a full 12 months had passed. And here's how she would go to the king. She would be given anything she wanted from the place where the virgin stayed. She could take it with her to the king's palace. In the evening, she would go there. In the morning, she would leave. Then she would go to the special place where the king's concubine stayed. She would be put under the control of Shash Gaz. He was the king's official who was in charge of the concubine. She would never return to the king unless he was pleased with her. He had to send for her by name before she could go to him again. Mordecai had adopted Esther. He, she had been the daughter of his uncle, Ab Abihail. Her turn came to go into the king. She only asked for what he guy suggested. He was the king's official who was in charge of the place where the virgin stayed. Everyone who saw Esther was pleased with her. She was taken to King Xerxes in the royal house. It was now the tenth month. That was the month of Tebeth. It was the seventh year of the rule of Xerxes. The king liked Esther more than he liked any of the other women. She pleased him more than any of the other virgins, so he put a royal crown on her head. He made her queen in Vashti's place. Then the king gave a feast to honor Esther. All his nobles and officials were invited. He announced a holiday all through the territories he ruled over. He freely gave many gifts in keeping with his royal wealth. The virgins were gathered together a second time. At that time, Mordecai was sitting at the palace gate. Esther had kept her family history a secret. He hadn't told anyone who her people were. Mordecai had told her not to. She continued to follow his direction. That's what she had always done when he would bring her up. Big Thana and Teresh was, were two of the king's officers. They got up the door of the royal palace. They became angry with King Xerxes. 
so they decided to kill him. They made the evil plans while Mordecai was sitting at the palace gate. So Mordecai found out about it and told Queen Esther. Then she reported it to the king. She told him that Mordecai had uncovered the plans against him. Some people checked Esther's report, and they found out it was true. So the two officials were put to death. Then poles were stuck through them. They were set up where people could see them. All of that was written in the official records. It was written down while the king was watching. After those events, King Xerxes honoured Haman. Haman was the son of Hamadatha. He was from the family line of Agag. The king gave Haman a higher position than he had before. He gave him a seat of honour. It was higher than the positions of any of the other nobles had. All the royal officials at the palace got down on their knees. They gave honour to Haman. That's because the king had commanded them to do it. But Mordecai refused to get down on his knees. He wouldn't give Haman any honour at all. The royal officials at the palace gate asked Mordecai a question. They said, why don't you obey the king's command? Day after day they spoke to him, but he still refused to obey. So they told Haman about it. They wanted to see whether he would let Mordecai get away with what he was to do. Mordecai had told them he was a Jew. Haman noticed that Mordecai wouldn't get down on his knees. He wouldn't give Haman any honour. So Haman was very angry. But he had found out who Mordecai's people were, so he didn't want to kill only Mordecai. He also looked for a way to destroy all of Mordecai's people. They were Jews. He wanted to kill all of them everywhere in the kingdom of Xerxes. The lot was cast in front of him. The, first, the lot was called Per. It was cast in the first month of the twelfth year that Xerxes was king. That month was called Nisan. The lot was cast to choose a day and a month. The month chosen was the twelfth month. That month was called Adar. Then Haman sent to King Xerxes, Send people are scattered among the nations. They live in all the territories in your kingdom. They keep themselves separate from everyone else. Their practices are different from the practices of all other people. They don't obey your laws. It really isn't good for you to put up with them. If it pleases you, give the order to destroy them. I'll even add 375 tons of silver to the king's officials for the royal treasures. So the king took his ring off his finger. The ring had his royal seal on it. He gave the ring to Haman. Haman was the son of Hamadak, the Agagite. Haman was the enemy of the Jews. He's the mighty, the king said to him. Do what you want with those people. The king said to the royal sent for the royal secretary. It was the thirteenth day of the first month. The secretaries wrote down, wrote down all Haman, Haman's orders. They wrote them down in the writing of each territory in the kingdom. They also wrote them in the language of each nation. The orders were sent to the royal officials and to the governors of the territories. And the orders were also sent to the nobles of the nation. The orders were written with the name of King Xerxes himself, and they were stamped with this official mark, an official mark. They were carried by messengers. They were sent to all the king's territories. The orders commanded people to destroy, kill, and wipe out all the Jews. They included young people and old people alike. They included women and children. All the Jews were supposed to be killed on a single day. That day was the 13th day of the 12th month. It was the month of Adar. The orders also commanded people to take everything that belonged to the Jews. The copy of the order had to be sent out as law. It had to be sent for every territory in the kingdom. It had to be announced to the people of every nation. Then they would be ready for, the, for that day. The king commanded the messengers to go out. So they did. The order was sent out from the port of Susa. Then the king and Haman sat down to drink wine, but the people in the city were bewildered. Mordecai found out about everything he had done, so he tore his clothes. He put on the rough clothing people wear when they sat. He sat down in ashes. Then he went out into the city. He wept out loud. He cried bitterly, but he only went as far as the palace gate. That's because no one dressed 
and that rock garden was allowed to go through it. All the Jews were very sad. They didn't eat anything. They wept and cried. Many of them sat on the raft, clad in people wear when they sat. They were lying down in ashes. They did all these things in the in every territory where the king or the law had been sent. Esther's male and female attendants came to her. They told her about Mordecai. So she became very troubled. She wanted him to take off his rough clothes. So she sent him other clothes to wear, but he wouldn't accept them. Then Esther sent, sent for Hathak. He was one of the king's officials. He had been appointed to take care of her. She ordered him to find out what was troubling Mordecai. She wanted to find. She wanted to know why he was so upset. So Hathak went out to see Mordecai. He was in the open area in front of the palace gate. Mordecai told him everything that happened to him. He told him about the exact amount of money Haman had promised to add to the royal treasures. He said Haman wanted it to be used to pay some men to destroy the Jews. Mordecai also gave Hathak a copy of the order. He commanded people to wipe out the Jews. The order had been sent from Susan. Mordecai told Hathak to show the order to Esther. She wanted Hathak to explain it to her. Mordecai told him to tell her to go and beg the king for mercy. Mordecai wanted her to make him appeal to the king for a people. Hathak went back and reported to Esther what Mordecai had said. Then Esther directed him to give an answer to Mordecai. He told, she told him to say, There is a certain law that everyone knows about it. The people in the royal territories know about it. It applies to any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner courtyard without being sent for. It says they must be put to death. But there is a way out. Suppose the king reaches at his gold scepter towards, toward them. Then their lives will be spared. But thirty days have gone by since the king sent for me. Esther's words were recorded to Mordecai. Then he sent back an answer. He said, You live in the king's palace, but don't think that just because you are there, you will be the only Jew who will escape. What if you don't say anything at this time? Then help for, then help the, for the Jews will come from another place, but you and your family will die. Who knows? It's possible that you became a queen for a time just like this. Then Esther sent a reply to Mordecai. She said, Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Caesar, and fast for my benefit. Don't eat or drink anything for three days. Do it. Don't do it night or day. I and my attendants will fast just as you do. Then I'll go to the king. I do it even though it's against the law. And if I have to die, I'll die. So Mordecai went away. He carried out all Esther's directions. Chapter 5 On the third day, Esther put on her royal robes. She stood in the inner courtyard of the palace. It was in front of the king's hall. The king was sitting on a royal throne in the hall. The king was sitting. He was facing the entrance. He saw Queen Esther standing in the courtyard. He, he was pleased with her. So he reached out toward her the gold scepter that was in his hand. Then Esther approached him. She touched the tip of the scepter. The king asked, What is it, Queen Esther? What do you want? I'll give it to you. I'll even give you up to half of my kingdom. Esther replied, King Xerxes, if it pleases you, come to a feast today. I've prepared it for you. Please have Haman come with you. Bring Haman at once, the king said to his servants. Then we'll do what Esther asks. So the king and Haman went to the feast Esther had prepared. As they were drinking wine, the king asked Esther the same question again. He said, What do you want? I'll give it to you. What do you want me to do for you? I'll even give you up to half of my kingdom. Esther replied, Here's what I want. Here's my appeal to you. I hope you will be pleased to give me what I want. I hope you will be I hope and I hope you will be pleased to listen to my appeal. If you are, 
I'd like you and Haman to come tomorrow to the feast. I'll prepare for you. Then I'll answer your question. The day Haman was happy, so he left the palace in a good mood. But then he saw Mordecai at the palace gate. He noticed that Mordecai didn't stand up when he walked by. In fact, Mordecai didn't have any respect for him at all. So he was very angry with him. But Haman was able to control himself. He went on home. Haman called together his friends and his wife, Zeresh. He bragged it to them about how rich he was. He talked about how many sons he had. He spoke about all the ways the king had honored him. He bragged about how the king had given him a high position. It was higher than the position of any uh, of any of the other nobles and officials. And that's not all. Haman asked, I'm the only person Queen Esther invited me along with the king tomorrow. But even all of that doesn't satisfy me. I won't be satisfied as long as I see that Jew Mordecai sitting at the palace gate. Haman's wife, Zeresh, and all his friends said to him, Get a pole. In the morning, ask the king to have Mordecai put to death. Have the pole stuck to his body. Set it up at a place where it will be 75 feet above the ground. Everyone will be able to see it there. Then go to the feast with the king. Have a good time. Haman was delighted with that suggestion, so he got the pole ready. So, Proverbs 25, hang on, Proverbs 26. It is isn't proper to honor a foolish person. That's like having snow in summer or rain at half the time. A curse given for no reason is like a wandering bird or a flying sparrow. It doesn't go anywhere. A whip is for a horse and a harness is for a donkey. And a beating is for the backs of foolish people. Don't answer a foolish person in keeping with their foolish acts. If you do, you yourself will be just like them. Answer a foolish person in keeping with, the, with their foolish acts. If you do not, they will be wise with, in their own eyes. Sending a message in the hand of a foolish person is like cutting off your fruit or drinking poison. A problem in the mouth of a foolish person is like disabled legs that are useless. Giving honor to a foolish person is like tying a stone in a slingshot. A problem in the mouth of a foolish person is like a thorn in the hand of someone who is drunk. And you who hires a foolish person or someone who is passing by is just like a person who shoots arrows at just anybody. Foolish people who do the same th- foolish things again are like a dog that returns to where it is thrown up. Do you see a person who is wise in their own eyes? There is more hope for a foolish person than for a them. A person who doesn't want to work says, there's a lion in the road. There's an angry lion wandering in the streets. A person who doesn't want to work turns over in bed, just like a door that swings back and forth. A person who doesn't want to work leaves his hand in his plate. He acts as if he is too tired to bring it back up to his mouth. A person who doesn't want to work is wiser in his own eyes than seven people who give careful answers. Don't be quick to get mixed up in someone else's fight. That's like grabbing a stray dog by its ears. Suppose a crazy person shoots flaming arrows that can kill. Someone who lies to their neighbor and says, I was only joking, is just like that crazy person. If you don't have wood, your fire goes out. If you don't talk about others, arguing dies down. Talk glows and wood burns. A person who argues stirs the conflict. The words of anyone who talks about others are like tasty bites of food. They go deep down inside you. All words that come from an evil heart are like a shining coating on a clay pot. Enemies use their words as a mask. They hide their evil plans in their hearts. Even though what they say can be challenged, don't believe them. That's because some things God hates fill that person's heart. The hatred can be hidden by lies, but the evil plans will be shown to everyone. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it. If someone throws a big stone, it will roll back on them. A tongue that tells lies hears the people it hurts, and words that seem to crazy destroy it. Proverb 100, Psalm 144 Give praise to the Lord, my rock. He trained my hands for war. He trained my fingers for battle. He is my loving God and is like a fort to me. He is my place of safety and the God who saves me. He is like a shield that keeps me safe. He brings nations under my control. Lord, well, why are human beings that you take care of them? What are, more, what are mere people that you think about them? Their lives don't last any longer than a breath. Their days are like a shadow that quickly disappears.
Lord, open up your heavens and come down. Touch the mountains, and they will pour out smoke. Send flashes of lightning and scatter my enemies. Shoot your arrows and chase them away. My enemies are like a mighty flood. Reach down from heaven and save me. Save me from outside as you attack me. They tell all kinds of lies with their mouth. Even when they make a promise by raising their right hands, they don't mean it. My God, I'll sing a new song to you. I'll make music on a, on, to you on a lie that is ten strings. You are the God that helps, that helps, who helps kings win battles. You save your servant day. From death by the sword, save me. Send me free from outsiders who attack me. They tell all kinds of lies with their mouth. Even when they make a promise by raising their right hands, they don't mean it. While our sons were, while our sons were young, they will be like healthy plants. Our daughters will be like pillars that have been made to decorate a house. Our storms will be filled with every kind of food. The sheep in our field will increase by thousands. They will increase by tens of thousands. Our oxen will pull heavy loads. None of our city walls will be broken down. No one will be carried off as a prisoner. No cries of pain will be heard in our streets. Blessed is the nation, nation about whom all these things are true. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Now that's done, I shall now do the Lord's Prayer. Please bow your heads. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as you have forgiven our debtors. Be us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.